All right, welcome back into the North Star Take podcast. Uh, for this segment, we're going to be talking about our Minnesota Twins, yes. who uh, are not off to the best start right now. Um, they've lost eight of their last nine games um, in some really weird fashion, too. They've blown a lot of leads. Um, they've gotten, you know, just spanked a couple times. They haven't been scoring runs in some games. So, uh, overall, what's your assessment so far? I mean, where are they going wrong? Yeah, it's been a rough start to the season. There's been a... There's been a lot of things that have gone wrong here. It just kind of depends on the game that we're talking about. Obviously, we've had our hitting downfalls here, but because our core guys, such as Miguel Sano, Jorge Polanco, Max Kepler, all these guys, they just just haven't done it yet. And other games, like the most recent one uh, that I can think of, is the last one in Oakland, actually. Mm-hmm. So when we lost that high-scoring shootout, 13-12 in extras, that was about as painful as it gets, and we're finding almost every way to lose right now, which which is not great. But <laughs> nope. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's time to panic. I think too many people are freaking out over the first uh, couple weeks of games here. I think we just got to pump the brakes, trust that we have a good roster, and that they're going to bounce back because this this rough stretch could happen at any point in the season. It just so happens it's happening in the beginning right now. So I think we just got to let things play the course, trust Rocco and the guys, and – I think we'll get it done. I, I I think we'll be fine. So I just don't – I don't think we need to jump to any long-term conclusions yet. I mean, how are you feeling about the start of the season? So I feel a little differently than you do, obviously. Um, our good friend Jackson Lefebvre would uh, be digging into you right now. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I agree with you. On paper, they do have a good roster. And, like, you look at this team from two years ago in 2019, they were the Bomba squad, hitting bombs all over the yard, hitting for good averages, driving in a ton of runs. And – about half that group has just completely fallen off over the last – granted, last year was a 60-game season. But if you look at last year and you look at the start of this year, it's not real encouraging for a lot of these guys. So, yeah, it's early in the season, and, yeah, it's only been, you know, 17 games or whatever it's been. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know, man. Like, the thing with Sano is very concerning. We know he goes on these absolute cold stretches, but now he's hurt, so he's going to be out for a while. Um, Polanco just had a good game, so maybe he's going to start to turn it around a little bit, at least with his batting average. But, I mean, really right now, it's just Nelson Cruz and Byron Buxton that are driving in runs, mm-hmm. and then Arias is getting on base, and they're they're the ones that are driving him in, basically. So um, I guess I feel a little differently about it than you do. I'm yeah. hoping they can turn it around, though. Otherwise, it's going to be a long summer. Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts about that, I guess? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to worry. It won't, won't be a long summer. It'll still be an enjoyable one for Twins baseball. And I think guys like Donaldson, too, are just getting back in the mix. And in the handful of games he's played so far, he's been outstanding. He's been worth every penny that we signed him to before last season. And I think him, Buxton, Cruz, I think they'll carry this team. And then eventually the rest of the guys will come around to support, get on base, guys like Polanco, people like Kepler, you know. I, yep. I think – we, yeah, we just, it's all about trust and just not not worry too much when it's a 162-game season. I think the biggest thing is going to just be find a way to win a couple games in a row and mm-hmm. just kind of turn the tides a little bit, get some confidence back in the clubhouse. Then I think these guys will start vibing again, and I think we'll we'll get on a hot streak here pretty soon. I, yeah. I got a good feeling about it because it just it's stretches every baseball team goes through, and I think right now it's, it's obviously we're – Feels like we're bottoming out. I'd like to think we can't get much worse than this unless more guys go on the injured list or something. But yeah, which you I, never know with this team. Exactly. And I think if we're really going to dig into the nitty-gritty reasons as to why we're not doing great, I mean, you can point to guys like Sano. Obviously, he's – last I checked, he was 5 for 45, 111 batting average. That's not good at all. And now he's on the injured list. But what's encouraging, if you want to look at the glass half full, is that – he has 13 walks this year, and that is encouraging. He's in top 10 in the whole league and in, in draw walks, so he's seeing the ball well as as far as like uh, only swinging at strikes for the most part. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, he's just got to hit his pitch, and I think that that's that's been him the last few years is that he gets off these slow starts, which obviously that's frustrating. But he eventually comes around. I know a couple of years ago when we had the big bomb squad season, he didn't come in until May because he had an injury until that point. But mm-hmm. then once he got here, he, he was about as cold as this. And then he came around in June, like right before the All-Star break, started hitting balls out of the ballpark every night. So yeah. I, I think if you, you can just put your trust in Sano, put your trust in the coaching staff to help him turn it around, I think – 
there's there's good things to come for him. And like you mentioned, Polanco recently, he's had a couple multi-hit games, so that's big for him. And I, I think he's a very – I think he's a more polished hitter than some of these other guys that are struggling because mm-hmm. I think he's going to hit for more average than those other guys. And yeah. it's nice to have a good switch hitting bat in your lineup. And I, I just think that he's he's not – it wasn't a fluke two years ago when he was the starting shortstop in the All-Star game. You don't think so? I don't think that was a fluke. I, I think this guy can hit for average. He sees the ball well. It's just – it's just one of the, it's just one of those times that he's he's just struggling. But I think another – key thing that I don't think people are reading into enough that I brought up to you the other day actually is that we don't have James Rawson anymore the hitting coach from the 2019 season yeah. he's off in Miami and I think that's hurt this team more than people know I think it's always going to help your lineup when you have a good hitting coach I mean mm-hmm. obviously you have veterans there to help out like uh, Josh Johnson and Nelson Cruz but like, there's only so much they can do so yep. I I think that that's definitely hurt this team too but I think Kepler would be on the on the COVID list. That doesn't help, but obviously no one's really at a fault there for that. So that right. just kind of is what it is. So you just got to hope these guys in the lineup turn it around. And I'm, I'll go on record and say people can pe- people can breathe. I will guarantee at this point in time, <laughs> I'll guarantee a playoff <laughs> spot. We're still going to be playing baseball in October, and we're going to break that ugly 18-game postseason losing streak. Is it going to be a division championship, though? Or is it going to be a wild card? I won't. I won't say which one of those. I, <laughs> I won't go that far, but because okay. we we have some strong teams in the division, such as Chicago, that are definitely good contenders. But the thing is, is that we're not even falling back that far in the division race either. I mean, we've got uh, Kansas City's out front right now, and I don't think that's that's long term success there. So, right. I, I think we're gonna be fine. I think as long as the bats can come around, we're gonna be a good team. And pitching has been inconsistent, but I'm I'm not too worried about them because I think we have good enough good arms with enough. Uh, good arsenals that they have, and I, I just think that those guys, those guys will just get better as the season goes on. So, hmm. Yeah, I, um, the bullpen's got me worried a little bit, but I mean the guys that are struggling are guys that have been so good for us, you know, over the last couple of years. Taylor Rogers, he's kind of struggling a little bit. Duffy hasn't been great. Now we got Alex Colome, who's been the um, Chicago White Sox closer for the last couple of years. So. I mean, I know it's early, and you know maybe they can figure something out here. Like you said, maybe they just need to win a couple of games, get back in the groove. But it's a little concerning, I would say, right now. I mean, when you have the best offense in Major League history, and you don't win a single playoff game, that makes it really tough to come back from. Yeah. So I mean, like, but like you mentioned earlier, the bright spots are Cruz and Buxton. They've just been absolutely destroying the ball. Yes. Yeah. Looking at the bright side of things, like Cruz and Buxton are easily. Uh, MVP candidates right now. Obviously, you can only say so much a few weeks into the season, but these guys are tied for second in the league and home runs only behind Ronald Cunha Jr. And obviously, that guy's one of the best in the whole league. So right. that, that's when How many does he have? He's got seven. Right okay, now. so we're but, right behind him. Yeah. So honestly, I think when you're in that conversation, you know, these guys are hitting the ball well. And Buxton, it's, it's nice to see that five to a player really come to fruition now. Everybody's dreamed about it since we took him second overall in 2014. <laughs> I mean, he's he's been the franchise player that everybody's waiting to wait for. And yep. now that he's staying on the field for a consistent amount of time, hopefully that continues over 162 game season because I think that's his biggest detriment, obviously, is his health because yeah. he's going to be on the field. I think he's top 10, probably top five in MVP voting. And yeah, I would agree. Because he can do it all. He can hit for power. I think he's going to start hitting for average here. Obviously, he's got the wheels that everybody's come to love. And then mm-hmm. he's got a good arm out there in center field. But even better, he's just got that range to make these insane catches that right. almost nobody in the league is going to make. So I I think when it's all said and done, it, yeah, he'll be assuming he stays healthy this year, plays 140, 150 games, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be top three in MVP voting and possible winning the award. But Yeah, I, I would say it's hard to disagree with you on that. I mean – like you said, he's he's our five tool player. He's our super, you know. He's supposed to be our superstar. The only, you know, the only concern with him obviously is his health and if he can stay healthy. And already okay. this year, he's kind of battled a hamstring for a mm-hmm. little bit. So, but I mean, as long as he can stay off the IL, if he has to miss a game or two here or there, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, yeah. he's going to need some rest anyways. So, um, and Nelson Cruz, you know, he's like yeah. Tom Brady almost. You know, <laughs> yeah. Father Time's not catching up with him. So. It's been it's been nice to have him as a stabilizing force because I can only imagine if he wasn't here this year, I think our DH situation would be kind of a mess right now. I think it would too with all these guys in the IL coming going. Yeah, I think that that could be a disaster to be honest. And I yeah, that's one one thing I was wondering though is like what's what's more shocking or what's more like what's more amazing I guess is a Cruz at age forty or in his forties he's 
he's just mashing the ball and it's kind of defying the odds of just aging as a baseball player. But then yep. you got Byron Buxton kind of coming up. Coming out of nowhere, some people, I know Twins fans have known he's had this potential all along, but the rest of the league's kind of taking notice now. So, yep. I don't know. What do you think is more surprising? Who, who starts do you think is is more like, like wow, that's that's incredible? I would say Buxton's just because we've seen this from Cruz ever since he's been here. Yeah. He's been our best player, mm-hmm. and he's a DH, you know. Like, you could arguably say he deserves some MVP votes over the last couple of years for how good he's been. And he just – all he does is hit. He doesn't play in the field. Mm-hmm. But Buxton, being able to stay healthy – and usually he's kind of like Sano where he gets off to a slow start or he gets hurt right away in the season. And, you know, he, it's just tough for him to come back from until midway through the season. Yeah. Well, this year he's starting off hot. And so as long as he can stay healthy, I mean, his potential is endless for the stats he could put up this year. I mean, he could, like you said, he could legitimately be the MVP, especially if this team comes back to make the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. I know. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the season plays out for him because, yeah, he's he just has a ton of extra base hits because the thing is he can hit the ball out of the ballparks. He has just this raw power that I don't think a lot of people really realize. Mm-hmm. And I think he's also obviously got the wheels for anything that's not directly hitting outfielders. He can probably turn into two because yeah. he's just that fast, which is – it's it's hard to even – like it's unfathomable. Right. It's, I, I just love it. It's, he's just one of the most fun players to watch in the league. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. So our last little uh, – topic here for the minnesota twins um how much criticism do you think rocco baldelli the manager deserves oh for, for this start i'm i mean we're all kind of in agreement he's made some questionable bullpen moves yes um this is a hot topic he pulls the, he seems to pull the starting pitchers way too early which i mean i understand wanting to save the arms and not force an injury but i mean if a guy's hot you gotta let him keep going yeah, I think it's fair to criticize Rocco to an extent this season, but I think people are kind of over-exaggerating a little bit and kind of getting on him too much because I know for sure one of the biggest things people have definitely hammered on Rocco is that loss in Oakland in extra innings where we had Blank and Horn in the ball game because we uh, pinch ran him for Donaldson and then we ended up putting him at second where he made that costly error and then after that arise at third and lost the game just like that. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a certain amount of criticism Rocco could take for that because how, how much advantage are you really going to get from taking Donaldson out of the game and putting right. him in Lincoln Horn? And maybe he's just playing it too safe because you want Donaldson getting hurt running the bases or something like he did in Milwaukee. But I I think part of that blame, though, is just got to go on Blank and Horn and Rise. I was, not, I was just thinking about that, how – why are why is everybody ripping on Rocco when these guys should just make routine plays? I yeah. get they're not like our starters, like especially Rise. He's more for his bat, and he doesn't really play a specific position. He's right. just a utility player, and like Blank and Hort, obviously he's been he's had very limited experience in the in the big leagues. So, I mean, to an extent, uh, Rocco putting out these uh, not great fielders or not known commodities in the field, but still, I feel like any any of these baseball players that are in these major league organizations i should i feel like they should be able to make routine plays so yeah i uh, agree with you i think i think rocco's part should blame for putting them in that situation but i also think they gotta make routine plays too mm-hmm. and as far as pitching goes i'm fine with rocco saving arms for now like i know everybody's upset that after burrios went six no hit innings against the brewers back in his first start and mm-hmm. he had all those strikeouts i think 12 he ended up with that night and they ended up yanking him with 84 pitches but that one I personally like to ride a guy and see how far he can go with the snow hitter. But on the other hand, I get where Rock was coming from because you kind of in fear that maybe Burrios throws out his arm in his first start. And then if he's out for an extended period of time. Then you're toast, yeah. And, yeah, and then you're screwed. And then people are still working him anyway. So he can mm-hmm. take the heat for a couple of days after he doesn't throw uh, – or takes him out when he's throwing yeah. a snow hitter. But if he had a long-term injury, that would just that'd be a disaster. That's so, true. So I, I think they got to save him for the long-term success of this team because, like – we already are a little bit sketchy in the back of our rotation the way it is yep. with guys like Hap and Shoemaker. I think <laughs> I still think they can be all right. I still think they can eat innings, but yep. I it's yeah, if Brio sort of go out, that should be another hole in your rotation that you have to fill and that'd be kinda of tough, especially over an extended period of time. So right. I get where Rocco's coming from. Yeah, I would say I mean Rocco deserves some criticism, but no manager is perfect. And I mean there's people that are already trying to call for Rocco's job. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. This guy won the AL Manager of the Year in 2019. We've won the division both years. Yeah, he. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he hasn't won a playoff game, but I mean, it's only his third year being a manager. He's a young guy. He's still got, you know, he's still learning, and that's fine. Um, I I would say probably 
85 percent of this team's start is on the players i mean like you said our core players are not producing like they're supposed to be we got a couple of you know our two best players are just absolutely outstanding yes they are but you know you need more than two guys to win games and when you guys want through nine yeah. yeah exactly and you know our pit our starting pitching like our first well barrios and my uh not my pineda mm-hmm. have both been solid to start this season 100 maeda's kind of his last start wasn't his very good his last start was his worst of the twin but yeah. the thing is, is that before that and all his starts with the twins he never allowed more than three earned earned runs in a start so yeah i can live with it because i think it Every pitcher's got to have a clunker every now and then, so mm-hmm. it, it just happens. It was unfortunate it was the other day, and that game we ended up losing at the end next year inning, so every run counted. But yep. at the same time, it, it just happens like that. But Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Um, you know, we could probably use a little more patience with this team. Give them another 20, 20 or so games. Give them another month. Yeah. yeah, give them time to figure it out, and hopefully, hopefully some of these other core veteran players will start coming through. Hopefully the bullpen will straighten out a little bit. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll get a spark from guys like Alex Kirilov, or maybe even yeah, Nick, that's Nick, true. Maybe even Nick Gordon. Honestly, if these guys are these guys are on the Colvin list, for instance, like Andrelton Simmons, maybe Nick Gordon comes up and surprises right out of yeah. the shoot. He's got a hot bat, then all of a sudden you got another producer in your lineup, which would right. be great. And obviously, he's the long forgotten prospect. He was once highly touted. Yeah, he was. And it'd be great if he just kind of took advantage of his opportunity he's got because. Honestly, he's a super speed guy too, isn't he? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and he can hit for contact, just get on base, maybe yeah. be ta- be a table setter for guys like Buxton and Cruz and Donaldson. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you never know. Obviously, we got to temper expectations a little bit, but I think that is a nice thing for Gordon. Though, is people have almost have forgotten about him. So, yeah. I feel like all expectations are off. So you can just go go out and do his best, and yeah. maybe surprise some people, and then maybe he. I mean, this is like hitting his ceiling here, but maybe he makes a case this season where he plays well enough. To the point where maybe he can start next year at shortstop because I, you know, Royce Lewis, he has that, that torn up knee, unfortunately. So he's yeah. set back a year. So he's not going to be ready to be our everyday shortstop for the Twins next year. So right. maybe Nick Gordon takes advantage after Simmons has gotten here after this one year contract. So I don't know. There's, you can get us, we just need a spark. And yeah. I think once we get the ball rolling, get a win or two, like you said, back to back, I, I think we can finally get back to, the season everybody envisioned for this team. And I, mm-hmm. I think it's, yeah, patience, patience is just, it's warranted here. And I know the Rocco conversation, if let's say we don't make the playoffs this year, which I, I don't foresee that happening right now. Like I said, I made a personal guarantee, <laughs> yeah, you but, did, yep. but um, then it would be disappointing. Then we'd really have to look at Rocco and, and the team as a whole and evaluate things. But I just think that, yeah, Rock, Rock can't take too much heat right now, though, because yeah. the thing is, we won the division twice. He was the manager of the year. And and the thing is, it's not like he's unorthodox. Like, he's a new age coach. He's really big in analytics, which I like. He's tr- going more in the trend of uh, where Major League Baseball is going. So I think that's, that's another good thing to have. And I also think it's just – I don't – I don't, how do I want to put this? I, I'd, I'd say with Rocco, you got to think about, too, how much he impacts the club also and how good he is for everybody there. Because I think he's definitely got a lot of respect among everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge to have. Because if, if you're at odds with your players, then that's another thing. Then, I, yeah. then I'd probably call for Rocco's job if we're not playing well and he's kind of indifferent with the players. That would yep. be a different thing. But the thing is, I haven't seen any signs whatsoever that are like, yeah, he doesn't – him and the – Clubhouse don't get along. So. Right. He's got that calm demeanor, which is really helpful. Exactly. I'll be kind of curious here. They just called up Alex Kirilov, how much of an impact he'll be able to make. Mm-hmm. We've already seen across all our Minnesota sports teams, besides the Twins so far, um, the young impacting rookies. we got Justin Jefferson with the Vikings, Kirill Kaprizov with the Wild, and Anthony Edwards with the Timberwolves. So I'll be curious uh, how Alex Kirilov is looking yeah. once he's up here to play full-time. So Let's make it a power four. I know. Yeah. That'd be very exciting. And I... I think, obviously, he's got all the talent in the world. Uh, just got to make it happen. Absolutely. Well, that'll do it for this episode of NST. Uh, be sure to find us on YouTube and uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. And uh, we'll be pumping out more episodes here shortly. Yeah.